Hey guys, welcome back to well somebody else's shop. I've actually slipped out of town. I'm in Morristown. Is that am I saying it right? Is it Morristown or Morriston? Morristown. Morristown, Tennessee, with our good friend Curdy Eldridge. He has uh, invited me out and uh, kind of given me the tour. I thought I'd take a time, I'd take a moment, and uh, and kind of go over with it with y'all what's entailed with restoring a carburetor. He is the number one in the business so who better to learn it from than him he's also got some brand new products over here i want to show you that you're not going to find anywhere else so stay tuned for that So Curdy's been uh, been kind enough. He's going to go through the steps and kind of show us what it takes. Uh, I really had no idea uh, how many steps and, and processes he goes through to, to clean up these old carburetors. So, uh, Curdy, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you. If you would explain to everybody kind of the process of what happens when they send you their carburetor. Yeah, so it comes here, gets unboxed, uh, like this guy right here. This is the work order when he does it on the website. He'll print it off, send it with the carburetor. It's got all his information, so I know who this belongs to. Because uh, it's fun getting carburetors in, we have no idea. Uh, then it gets completely broken down to the bare body. So go ahead and put the carb kit in if it needs. And then from there, it waits in line to go to the next station. It'll go to that first ultrasonic cleaner. It'll run through that for 45 minutes. And it gets blown off. And then we go into the dry blast cabinet with uh, number four mil spec class B. So it's not real abrasive, but it gets all the oxidization, all the nasty stuff off of it really quick. Uh, then it goes back into the ultrasonic cleaner, run through another process. Then from there, vapor home back to the second ultrasonic cleaner, which is just pure water. Now the vapor hone, is that a glass bead and water? Yeah, okay. so it, what they call is a slurry mix. Slurry, that's right. Uh, it'll have a, with a number 13 ultra fine uh, glass bead. So it's, it's almost like a powder okay. and then, uh, distilled water. So typically about 20% glass bead of water. Okay. With air. And then uh, from there, all the little parts get either hand polished, machine polished, or powder coated. So which very soon, the polish instead of there. powder coating uh, and a lot of the polishing will be plating. Uh, doing all the plating just like so that's a zinc plate. Is that uh, correct? Zinc plate with yellow chromate, black chromate, blue chromate. So exactly how it came out of the factory. All right. So then. I sit here for hours on end, uh, taking all the little dremels, all the little tools, going through and, and you know polishing everything up, polishing all the choke guides, slide throw, all your bores. It really looks brand new. Yeah, it really does. Looks like it's just cast. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Okay, and then, and then this is an example of what you started with here on the same car. Yep, take a carb out of the box that looks like it's been in the ground for 30 years. <laughs> of course, this one's in rough, rough shape, but yeah. gives you a pretty good idea and then ends up like this guy here. It looks great. It really does. I mean, all the passages are, are just perfect again. So okay. eventually, all these little parts that are sitting here are all look brand spanking new, all polished, smooth, everything working properly. Just takes a lot of time. <laughs> I see that it does. It does. Um, now you were explaining to me that you had some some new products that really you're just not going to find anywhere else. That you've actually went out and and sourced manufacturers oh, to yeah. remake these parts uh, for these older carburetors. Can you share uh, some of the parts that you have made? So the the three newest things uh, right now is we've got brand new uh, fuel screens for your small carbs like the, I don't know if you can see that on that white table yeah there it might go. be a little hard there <laughs> but all your ATC 70s 90s 110s 125s it's got that uh, screen in the bowl mm -hmm. that's a brand new one okay 
uh, brand new choke lever kit for all your ATC 185 200 cards. Okay, yep. So pretty much all your hardtails. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can even convert if you're tired of messing with a cable choke on, say, your 200E, 200M, 200ES. You can put this kit on it and just do away with that. Whole okay, so instead of replacing, because I found many times that the bracket that holds the, the actual steel cable breaks. Yeah. And so that's a lot harder to find because some of them are part of the dash. Right. And so either you got to replace the dash, but you're saying you can just convert a cable operated choke with this to a manual choke and do away with all of that. Yeah, so you Very pull good. the bracket off and pull the spring out and the lever and then just replace it with this guy right here. Okay. So it'll work exactly like it's say a 200X or an XR200. Very cool. Where it's got the little ball in it. Obviously. It's got the detents in it, so it'll hold the what choke you have it set at. Yeah. Very good. Very and, good. Uh, another newest thing we've got is brand new floats for all your QAs, QBs, VEs, CVKs. I think you said this would run all the way up to the 400 EX, also. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah. Now these the are QB. I know these are hard to find. They yeah. These are hard to find. I'm yeah, sure. they don't make them anymore. Yeah. Well, that covers, Honda doesn't have them available anymore. Covers a lot of different machines for uh, sure. But all your your ATC 250s, the, the 350X, um, the 350D, so all the QA carburetors. So this is a QA carburetor. Most all your QB carburetors, which is 300EX, 400EX, except for the newest 400EX, which is the QB 11A. So the QB 10A is that same. All your TRX 300s. Um, so it's okay, great. And here's one, we don't even have it on the website yet. So this is brand new. This is first time new. seeing it right here. Uh, so all the guys, all you guys with the second gen 250R running the PWK car. Brand new boot that goes from the PWK card to the factory air box. All right, well there it is right there, y'all. Brand new, right off the market. Or right Chris on the market. Chris has the first one. He has the prototype, yeah, I just huh? sent him one, so he's gonna try that out. Make sure everything's exactly the way it's supposed to be before I before I post them, but they'll be available soon. Outstanding, great. And here is uh, the 350X boot. This is what Preston just done a, yep. a video yep. on. So these are all 3D printed. Yeah, with a TPU. So I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're rubber-like things, like you know, the extended idles. And yeah. Now this is a little longer than the factory one, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So this is your extended idle. So you can get your hands down there to it. Yeah. There's yeah. your factory. One. There's your difference. It's a, it's subtle, but it, it's big. That's a big difference. Oh, it makes it much easier. Much easier to, to get your hands on the idle on your, big on your rig. idle on your big rig because it comes in a, uh, underneath, and it's always hot down there too. That's when I end up having to adjust mine. Yeah. And then of course you make your side covers also. Yeah, and all your, the different colors. You make different colors for your side covers. Now this right here, this was the first product here that I saw of yours that that I thought was just really cool and something that probably should have been thought of a long time ago was a clear bowl. Because you never know on a solid bowl if you've got fuel down there unless you, you know, crack the, the bleeder on it. But to be able to just quickly look and see that you have fuel in your car is just, it's just peace of mind knowing that the, the tubing is clean, the filter's clear, the, the float is not hung up. All of those, you know, all of those oh, yeah. parts that have to be working just to get fuel down there. You can look real quick Plus and see. Plus it's real quick to tell if I get trash in the Right, car that's another thing. Look for trash. trash it's going to float. Uh, some of the carbs, especially some of the 200 carbs, you have that adjustable float. Uh, so I'll show you the difference between the two floats. In the PD carbs, you have two different style floats. Of course, this guy is not adjustable, which is pretty rough. <laughs> that one might be a little easier to see. And then you have the one that's adjustable. So the other thing that's going to allow you to do too, so if you have the adjustable one, Where's my fuel level at? You can quickly see, is it too high? Is it too low? I didn't even think about that, but yeah, you could do that without even taking it off the machine. That's a very, very smart idea. Wow. That's great.
Well, that's a quick overview. We've got a lot more to talk about, but that's a quick overview of what's entailed when you send a carburetor to 223 cycles. It really is from beginning to end, from polishing the inside, the outside, it's gonna look brand new. So check it out. The website's on the screen. It's also down in the description, 223cycles.net. Give Curdy a call. He's the guy I highly recommend everybody does. Uh, he is the name to know in carburetors.